Just how do you measure success when it comes to your AI? What are the rules and the measurement and what are the resources out there to help you do so? Well, we're going to look at that this week in the Data Radio Show. Hello there. In this week's episode of the Data Radio Show, Sam's going to sit down and have a chat to Shung Lan. He's the Chief Data Scientist for Tech Data based out of Australia. And they're going to take a look at how we measure success in AI. You know, is it questions around accuracy or latency or consumer buy-in? And on top of that, they're going to talk a little bit about some resources that are out there for data managers to have a look at so that they can upskill themselves in a field that's exponentially growing all the time. So let's jump over now and have a chat to Sam. But before we do that, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell everyone about the video. All right, let's go. Have a listen in. Hello, listeners and viewers. Today I'm joined by Shung Lang. Uh, he's from Tech Data, and uh, you may know him from previous episodes where we have had discussions about artificial intelligence and data science. Welcome, Shung. Thank you, Sam. Happy to be here. Great. Um, so today we have some exciting announcements in terms of some of the work that Shung has been doing in terms of the Data Innovators Exchange. We have built a, a classroom on there for data scientists, data analysts, and data engineers to experiment with AI or generative AI or large language models. Um, and I suppose the genesis of all of this was a conversation that Shung and I were having about what's been going on uh, in the marketplace, especially in Australia, over the last 12 months. Um, I, I suppose, Shung, my opening question to you is, what are some of the trends that you have observed in terms of the adoption of generative AI and the use of large language models in terms of data science in the last 12 months? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And we have been asked similar question recently. If we look at last 12 months, uh, I think we can, um, personally, I observe the trend if we take the Gartner hype cycle, um, hype cycle that curve. I think last, last 12 months, we're going from the peak of the expectation to uh, go down a little bit. Um, for now, we, we also heard this AI fatigue since there is so many talk about AI, but when it comes to the AI use case in, in production or the AI actually deliver great ROI, that is um, not very easy to, to, to find. So I'm saying this for now, we are still in the early stage. Um, we do have this early adapter use AI in their daily work, daily life. But there's a long way to go to, to maybe get AI or generative AI in a stage like uh, Google or like Excel, which people use every day. And a lot of people know how to use it. Yeah, I guess one of the things that uh, you've mentioned is that there's a lot of interest in different use case or use cases. Um, it seems like there's curiosity and experimentation going on, but not a lot happening tangibly in terms of the, the adoption. Yeah, for, for now, I think the most, um, we'll say the successful AI uh, use case, the one already in production, uh, is mainly focused on um, for um, to, to automate some uh, tedious or repetitive tasks. For example, the uh, meeting minutes summer edition that many people use that to join a meeting as their personal assistant to take the notes and summarize that or to um, automate some repetitive task to, to improve the productivity. That is what I, I have seen on the market. Uh, regardless, the industry can be uh, higher education, healthcare, or um, other industry, um, we, we observe this similar um, AI use case in place. But regarding other more uh, complex use case, um, there is still, um, well, I think people more expecting something, you can just open it and use it like ChatGPT. 
but in reality, you need, um, for, for example, for, to make the AI deliver the content relevant to your uh, domain knowledge or your domain data, you need the data right. You need to get the right place for your data. And also you need to build a pipeline to maintain that knowledge base. Then you will uh, come to build a customized uh, application or front end for your business user. So that will, um, I think that may um, take more than people expecting to get the AI work in more complex uh, use case. Um, right. Yeah, personally, I'm a AI optimi optimistic. So I'm thinking we will get in there uh, with this new tool um, available with every month um, is very fast moving um, landscape. Yeah, I guess from some of the early use cases and scenarios that we were working on about this time last year, um, you, you've published some of those. And I understand that there's quite a lot of interest in different uh, use cases. Are, are there any that are getting more interest than others from your um, sense of the market? Um, so last time, yeah, we, we talked about this uh, three entry point. One is uh, customer care, like the chatbot. The second part will be um, more like HR, uh, HR uh, yeah. assistant to help you do some HR related task, automate that task. The third one is this uh, app modernization, basically to use AI to help you do um, AI development. So that part is getting more attention, I would say in the last few months. For example, this new uh, new tools is available uh, like Cursor and also the uh, GitHub Colab, Copilot have a new model um, to, to become more capable, not only to generate a few line of code for like code recommendation, it's more to a, help you to, to build a small project, build the backend, front end, um, to, to become like an experienced developer. It's not just a, a few line code. You, you have to be, have a very good solid knowledge to leverage that too. But if you are like beginner, you have this too, it will definitely get you a higher level with that. So I think the, um, developer tool for AI or app. Uh, modernization area get more interest right and from your point of view um tinkering around with um ai in, in a variety of different cases what new tools have come out um in recent times that have kind of been a a little bit mind-blowing for you um you know i i know we were playing around with notebook lm um a couple yep. of weeks ago but, but what other tools have really kind of been aha moments for you? Um, one will be um, this uh, low latency for speak to speak, um, speak to speak voice assistant. So we, this one is just available um, under OpenAI. They call that real time API. Um, the difference is before we want to build a voice uh, assistant. So it will typically go, you, you convert the text to speech. Uh, then when, when you receive that uh, speak response, then you convert speech to text. So there is a two, um, two things you need to do to build this voice. For now, basically we skip that text to speech conversion. We go speech to speech directly. So that significantly reduce the latency. Um, that is really uh, make a difference. Like five months ago or three months ago, we we struggling with this uh, uh, awkward silence, or we'll call that, between um, human and this uh, voice assistant. But now this latency is um, is difficult to notice. It's more natural conversation. Um, to, to build, build one. So that is a very good. Another one will be the um, Notebook LM. So they, they have a new, um, very cool feature to, to generate a 
uh, like a podcast to two people will debate on the document or knowledge you you um, post. I think that is very good for for people who are used to learn something by listening. Um, so they just put in that a document, then hear that podcast or debate to learn the knowledge. Yeah, and one that you've, uh, well, both of us use on a regular basis is perplexity. Um, yeah. That uh, I guess it's almost a, a rag model um, in action, certainly in terms of it providing um, citations and, and references. I found it particularly useful in terms of uh, uh, being a research assistant. What is it that um, perplexity does that's a bit different to say ChatGPT and where you've run into some limitations in terms of what you've been trying to do with some of the experiments that you've been running? Yeah, uh, for per perplexity, I think it's great too as well. Um, I think it's more than a uh, rag. But the idea is basically the response is based on some search result. It's not based on the model um, model training data. Um, the benefit you get more latest recent um, result, and also you have some reference to check the uh, the, the accuracy the, the response. Um, compared to ChatGPT, ChatGPT also have a search. Uh, function as well. Basically, you, you you ask something, it will go search the content and response. But that search, based on my observation, is only based on this Microsoft ping uh, search result. For per perplexity, I think it's more than just being uh, being search. I think it's more than a um, lot of the search uh, function. Um, this part, I don't know. Maybe they don't use search. They have their own uh, knowledge base. They just uh, scrapping all this recent data over the internet since uh, the speed is really fast. If you ask same question, compare ChatGPT and uh, Perplexity, they 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 ha may have some um, good way to get the recent knowledge uh, with a very uh, speed uh, way compared to just the search. Well, that's probably quite a good segue into talking about the importance of the accuracy of the results and reducing hallucinations. And when we talk about uh, retrieval augmented um, generation, why is that important, uh, especially in terms of the enterprise context and applying it in the corporate environment? Yeah, for for that one, we 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 heard a lot of the news. People just use take what ChatGPT said in some important document or important work, like a lawyer just take that as some evidence. So that will definitely um, cause more um, will cause more uh, problems. Like if you use this one, you didn't check. Um, who is responsible for this uh, consequences for that one? And simple idea is you just use this ChatGPT result for some HR task. Like uh, if you ask ChatGPT how much raise I, I can give for this employee compensation, so that will cause more issue. And there's obviously some regulations to to ban that AI in a certain uh, system. So. Uh, to evaluate that uh, rag, um, we, we need to know um, some task, some answer is um, is fact based or this is just make up. We want the answer as true as possible. Like if the chatbot doesn't know, doesn't know the answer, just say it doesn't know instead of make up something, and people will make some decision based on that wrong information. So I think that is people try to avoid. Um, avoid in, uh, especially in this, uh, this critical uh, area. Okay. And I, I guess one of the things that has been occurring over the last 12 months is uh, the evolution of not only the, the language models, but also how you can implement and use RAG-based um, models. 
Um, what have been some of the notable uh, improvements that you've seen over the last 12 months that might lower the barrier to adoption? Um, so one you've already mentioned, for instance, is um, speech to speech or you know speech recognition and um, I guess what you might call natural language conversation rather than natural language processing. Um, what are some of the other advances that you've seen, particularly in relation to deployment in the enterprise environment? Um, for um, for this uh, interface, there is more um, more way to interact with uh, large language model or AI. So before we majority is just a chat use text. Now we have a speech. And going forward, or now we already have some vision uh, vision model to, to understand image, to understand video. I think that is uh, more more way to interact with a model. Uh, is That is getting more uh, popular now. For now, I think the voice is one. Next will be the vision. Another way is uh, before we just have a chat window, like people talk about something and uh, give some document. Now there is a new release from, again, from OpenAI, they call Canvas. So they think about this uh, bad, best way to interact the AI is you have an empty uh, Canvas. So you just uh, drag and draw, highlight, and do all this uh, different way to interact with AI. So that is uh, getting better and more way for people to, to use AI, to leverage AI, build their, build their work. Like you can highlight some parts, say this part is we need to um, uh, rephrase or you need to modify this part of code to do something. Um, before that highlight features, you, you just basically tell, tell the chat GPT. Since that is getting better and easier to do. Uh, for enterprise, um, side, I think it will be, um, again, for enterprise will be a little bit different compared to the uh, the consumer-faced product. Enterprise maybe have a multiple systems and uh, you need have a different component for different purpose, like the database or knowledge base that you have the front end for your user, business user, and you have the large language model and you also need to manage the large language model. You need to uh, do the logging, do the evaluation to check. So that is we we are seeing more offering from the market to help you to easily manage that and also to meet these uh, regulations. Um, actually, that's a, a good point. Um, what have you noticed from a regulation standpoint? Uh, is there uh, what developments have there been on that front in your observation? Yeah, so so I think for the regulation, um, the the famous one is uh, Europe AI um, Europe EU uh, AI Act. So that one, what that do is that categorize the different AI use case. Like there is use case for high risk, low risk, then for different category. They have different um, policy um, against this use case. For example, for some use case, they uh, they again they ban AI. They did, that doesn't allow people to use AI. Um, come to the Australia. We I think in September fifth, there is a voluntary AI safety um, regulation published. Uh, that one essentially is like a human centered uh, AI regulation. Um, is for now it's voluntary and it's high level and there is also um consultation going on to 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 make some mandatory um ai regulations um for that one i think now come to some more practical examples for ai governance now is majority um um uh, we'll say the main component will be one is this uh, documentation. You need to document what model you are using, what a use case you are using. Se second part is um, uh, monitoring and evaluation. So before you go to production, you evaluation this accuracy. And when you go to production, you need to monitor this uh, performance, make sure the response is um, 
appropriate is expected. The last part will be manage the risk. So there is a lot of work to make sure this use case is um, follow uh, the regulation and is comply with this uh, different um, different regulations in different regions. So all these three main components is the current um, uh, framework we use for AR governance and also um, there's a tools like uh, IBM WatsonX.governance um, to help you um, easily manage all these three components to um, essentially accelerate the AI from idea to prove our concept or to production um, to make sure you use that as safely and also get, deliver the pr productivity as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess um, uh, given the, the, the theme that we're talking about in terms of uh, this being a new field for everyone, um, yep. let's, let's talk a little bit about the classroom that you've built and some of the resources that are there. Um, some of this is your own work in terms of uh, stuff that you've put together uh, around yep. AI use cases. Can you give um, listeners and viewers a little bit of an introduction to what you've pulled together uh, in the classroom, who's it for, and what they can expect to get from the, the classroom? Yeah, um, since the classroom, the contents, uh, we work on this in the last uh, eight months or 12 months, is have um, three uh, topic. The first one is uh, common AI use cases in different industry, like finance, retail, healthcare. The second topic is um, uh, this uh, webinar, monthly webinar we, we run and host it in Tech Data. So the content is um, varied. Uh, from different topic. It can be very hands-on, how to build a, a rag webinar, like retrieval augment generation, or in high level for, for to talk about this AI for enterprise, AI for business. And we have uh, eight um, webinar recording and also the slides so far. And we we have the IBM or, uh, the, or the industry specialist to, to be the guest speaker. The, um, the last uh, topic is more uh, specific for this uh, AI AI tool. Uh, we talk about IBM Watson X. Consider this is fast evolving uh, area. There's new feature, new tools, basically every day, every month. So this um, topic, we um, pick this most popular um, tool and features to give you some uh, hands-on um, tutorial type. Uh, you can see how to build this, uh, how, how to use this to build your own AI use cases. That is the third topic. Um, I think this uh, content is good for um, uh, for beginner or you are uh, someone want to learn more detail on IBM What's Next, or you just in general interest in this area, you can also to check this uh, classroom. So let's say I was a, um, uh, data warehouse um, manager, let's say, and I'm, I wanted to experiment a little bit with um, how to build uh, a RAG model and, and interact with an LLM. Uh, you, you'll find the, the guidance to do that in the classroom? Yeah, for that one, um, we don't have a specific for a data warehouse, but we do have a mention there is, uh, we, under the use case, uh, there is a use case for um, use AI uh, to build a SQL uh, assistant. Like you use natural language to asking for some data and that will convert to a SQL query, uh, then go to query your uh, database. So that could be some use case to give the um, users an idea how they can use AI, um, what use case it may be applicable for them. Um, so. Definitely uh, is a good content to get some ideas, uh, maybe not specific for the specific for, for our area, but in general will give you uh, some inspirations and uh, ideas to be, build your own uh, use case. Super. Well, that's excellent. Uh, I guess one, one last question for you, Sean. Um, mm -hmm. 
what prediction do you have for the next six months in terms of AI? I know you've you've mentioned um, uh, incorporating vision into things, um, and you've mentioned you know speech, conversational speech, and and Canvas. Is there anything else that you you're noticing on the horizon? As an AI optimist, um, you know it's fast moving. Six months time. Any predictions? For uh, going forward, I think a vision may be uh, more uh, more popular, get more attention. So basically, think about AI. Like we, you mentioned, that bring your own intern to the work. So think about if we think about that is intern will kind of like you hope the intern can not only send you a text response, you hope, mm -hmm. you hope this intern can can talk, can can see. So for now, I think the the talk and the, to text that is what we already have is very good now. The vision um, may be the next step. So we have something can can talk, can speak, can see. That is really open more possibility to to AI use case and applications. Okay, and is there any vision application that you you're tinkering around with at the moment or, or playing around with? Uh, not yet, <laughs> not yet. But we we have seen <laughs> this one like one application uh, called Be My Eye. So that is for uh, help the the people um, have this uh, visual difficulty. To, to have something maybe in the iPhone can help them to navigate or talk through what happened uh, surrounding them. Um, that is very good use for, for AI to help people get a better better life and um, do the goodness, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, I think that's a pretty good place to draw it to a close. Um, thanks so much for your time once again, Sean. Thank you. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of the Data Radio Show. You can learn more about what it is that we do in our school classroom, and don't forget you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter, which does deep dive into topics around data management and AI, all completely for free. So make sure you do that. There's links down in the description below, super easy to find. Until next time, have a fantastic week, and live long and prosper.